There are several different ways for you to bring down the clutter or the mess in your program and to be able to add reusability into code. One such example that we did in this example was to be able to have an outside method called print data and we moved all the print jobs over to the print data. Another thing that we did was to have uh, a master constructor and all constructors will forward their call over to this master constructor. Another way of, uh, of having code reusability was to have through a composition class called phone. Another way to have a code reusability or to remove stuff which probably could cause some clutter uh, is to have an inner class, which is a class within a class. Now the question is, why would you want to have a class within a class and not have a composition class, like outside class? Sometimes you create an outside class if that needs to be shared between more than one classes. Sometimes you need to create a class that doesn't need to be shared with several classes. Rather, you want to keep it within the current class. So for that reason, you create an inner class. Now, let's say if I have a, um, my employees are working for departments and I have this complex mechanism of coming up with department IDs that does include a code, a name of the department, and some kind of a department ID. So instead of defining three different fields in the employee class, I can create a separate inner class called department that's going to take care of all the needs of structuring or putting together a department ID. And whenever I instantiate an instance of department ID, it will actually be a composition of three values. So we're going to try to look at how to go about creating an inner class and how to go about utilizing an inner class in this example. To start the process, I would like to first scroll down, but I should still stay within my class. And I would like to have this private class called created, created called department. And this will be within the boundaries of my existing class, as you can see. In this class called department, I would want to have a private integer called code, another private string called the department name, um, another private integer call the department ID. So these are the properties that I have in line. Then I would like to create a constructor of the department class which will going to help me initialize each one of them to some kind of an initial value so let's say if I say the code initial value is to be 999 and the D names initial value is to be some value and the department IDs initial value is to be 111. Uh, of course, I must be removing the double quotes around the code and the DIDs. Okay, so here I have the three properties initialized. And now I want to have one main setter and one main getter so that I can just call a setter and set all three of them in one shot. And I should be able to get all three of them concatenated as one long string in one shot. Okay? So I say public void set values. And I have an int C, a string D, and for name, and another int call di for department id. So I say code equals to c, d name equals to dn, and dept id equals to di. Those are the three properties that I'm initializing to. Similarly, I'm going to have a getter that will be returning a string which will be concatenation of my code followed by a hyphen, followed by the department name, followed by another hyphen, and followed by my department ID. And for readability purpose, I'm putting it in parentheses. Even if you don't put it in parentheses, it really does not make any difference. So I have this inner class called department, which consists of three properties, which I'm initializing inside the constructor. 
I am having a setter which will allow me to change their values and I have a getter that will allow me to concatenate all these three values together and return it back to the user when the user calls. Oh, you see all these uh, orange lines because we have declared this class but have not yet used it. So let's go up into my class and now let's introduce a class property called private department called D-E-P-T-E-M-P. -E so now I have this ID of department type. I have this ID, I have, I have this opt instance of department type that now allows me to be able to work with the three part values. So now I go down in my master constructor and as I have instantiate a phone object, I will now going to instantiate this employee object, uh, department object in the employee in constructor. So that allows me to have this department object. So now I have an inner class object instantiated as a property of my class. Now it's time to use it. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to go to my display method. And in my display method, I will going to have another line of code here, which will be talking about the employee department information. And that will simply going to call my temp object, which is my temporary object dot department employee dot get values. So now I need to have a concatenation right on this line so that the next line gets concatenated with this line and that's that will going to take care of this red line error. And now I will going to go about running this. And as you can see over here that I get for each employee the current count, the employee arrival count, the ID, the pay, the phone number, and the employee's department information, which is pulling out the default values, 999, some value, and 111. Now what I'm going to do is, just like in my previous example, as I change the phone number of the employee, now I will going to use the same format, an instance of the employee class, dot, the instance of the department class, dot, the method in the department class, which requires three parameters. The first is an integer, so I put it in an integer value. Let's say I want to give a code of 987, and I want to have a department name called sales, and I want to have a department ID called 9956. And now when I save this, but after putting in Terminator, now let me rerun my code and as I rerun my code it tells me that count one employee number one default ID default pay default phone number default department ID but now same count same arrival count but now different ID different pay different number and different information of the department as you can see in this line over here you can see 987, which I passed as a parameter, 987. Sales, which is after the hyphen, hyphen and 956. So now it has a different department information. So this is how you can also utilize an inner class. And notice we followed the same sequence. You can't really tell if you notice these two lines, the phone number line and the department line. The sequence is the same, a local instance the property instance and the method. For both phone number and department, we did the exact same thing. And both of these are examples of composition, whereas in the first case, it's truly a composition because it is establishing relationship between two classes. However, in the second case, it is a composition with an inner class. And since it's a private inner class, it cannot be used by anybody outside. It could only be used by the employee class only. 
Now notice one thing in your bin folder where your byte codes are recorded. You can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six Java files. However, in my class, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven classes. Whenever I declare an inner class, this is what Java does. It creates a separate bytecode file where it writes outer class name, dollar sign, and then the inner class name dot class. So as you can see, this is the pattern over here. The outer class name, dollar sign, inner class name, dot class. However, it doesn't do anything like that in the source, but it does that in the bytecode so that it is treated as a separate file. So for each inner class, it generates a separate bytecode file, but no separate source code file gets generated. Hopefully, these examples or these parts would have helped you understand and learn a lot of these concepts pertaining to object-oriented programming. Thank you for watching the tutorial. See you guys very soon with another tutorial on a different subject.